Universal Studios Florida, Nickelodeon Studios is the one place where people can come and experience their favorite Nickelodeon shows actually being made. They can sit in the audience, they can talk to the crews, they can watch directors direct, they can watch sound recordists record sound. But more importantly, they can audition to actually be on those Nickelodeon shows right here. What's up guys, my name is Jake. It's been almost four years since my incredibly popular video, Abandoned Nickelodeon Studios, came out. Since then, quite a lot has happened and changed. I'm not in high school anymore, my production quality has generally increased, and I now know how to pronounce Keenan and Kel. More importantly though, quite a lot has changed with the formerly abandoned Nickelodeon Studios Florida, so I thought it might be interesting to take a look at what has changed since then, and what's to come. For those of you who don't know, back when Universal Studios Florida opened in 1990, in the production central area of the park sat Nickelodeon Studios, a fully operational production facility where many of the 1990 shows on the channel were produced. Back then, both Disney's MGM Studios and Universal Studios Florida were intended to take advantage of the state's film tax break, to combine an active movie studio with a theme park. Disney had their own take and Universal had theirs, partly with Nickelodeon. The studio and guest tour though ultimately closed in 2005 for a myriad of reasons, most notably the decline of active productions in Florida. From 2005 to roughly around 2015 though, Nickelodeon Studios Florida sat vacant and abandoned. Some of the sound stages were being used periodically, however the main Nickelodeon building with the murals of the 1990s cartoons and the general production offices had been left abandoned. In 2007, the Blue Man Group had moved in to one of the two former main sound stages for Nick. That left Soundstage 19 and the main offices connecting the two still there. It wasn't until 2015 when Universal Studios Orlando began tearing out the interior of the Nickelodeon offices. They began with the main hall taking out the escalators first, then removing the wild thornberry mural surrounding them. For years, the exterior of the main building had been painted over with blue and white paint, covering its former distinctly Nickelodeon appearance. This obviously made it somewhat blend in with its Blue Man Group neighbor. However, now, it was time for the interior to get the same treatment. This was around when I filmed the building back in January of 2016. Which, by the way, I actually did get permission from a construction worker who probably didn't know what she was doing. But it's fine. Anyways, I got a good look at the renovation, and it proved to be pretty substantial. All major theming from the Nickelodeon Studios era of the building had been completely removed, in favor of blue and white paint, complementing the show next door. And in November of 2016, most of the former Nickelodeon Studios space became a VIP experience for the Blue Man Group. Universal also allegedly invested around $1.2 million to renovate the production offices on the second floor of the former studios, as well as the adjacent Soundstage 19. So that brings us to 2019. On the outside of the former Nickelodeon Studios is now a blue and white shell of its former self. But there are some clues from its heyday. Here you can see the current entrance to Universal Studios, under the Rip Ride Rocket. However, back in the day, the original secondary entrance was over by the Hard Rock Cafe. Actually, this whole courtyard, which used to have the slime fountain, used to be inside the park. Speaking of that iconic slime geyser, it was taken out in 2005 of course, and this is all that's left, where it used to sit. One of the last and only public indications of the former Nickelodeon Studios is oddly enough inside the public bathrooms. On the floor tiles, you can see the original slime design scheme throughout. Now, obviously I don't want to break the rules and go inside the former studio. However, I know someone who already has. Back in early 2018, Matt Sanswa, my podcast co-host, had filmed what the interior currently looks like after the Nickelodeon equipment, signage, and theming had been removed. Upstairs, where all of the murals depicting various scenes from animated Nickelodeon shows have now been completely painted over. The support and production offices where most of the shows filmed at the studios were operated and produced are still there. Of course, in Universal's million dollar overhaul, they have been updated and now, from what I understand, they could be rented out for studio use. Since Stage 18 is now Blue Man Group, that leaves Soundstage 19, which, after the renovation, is back into somewhat regular use for various productions. For instance, when Matt visited, they had been setting up for some sort of boxing match with various offices inside the building being used for that production. And while much of the former signage and clues that identified this used-to-be Nickelodeon Studios is now gone, as Matt discovered, a few still remain as a reminder of the past. But unfortunately, that's really all that's left. 
it's hard to believe that Nickelodeon was a pretty big part of the Universal Studios Florida experience. The fact that you could tour and even be a member of the productions where television shows of the 1990s were filmed was incredible. Once Nickelodeon Studios left in 2005 though, their contract with Universal was over, and they were just never going to return. However, curiously, the facility was left abandoned until now, when Nickelodeon's presence in the park was finally dissolved. Speaking of Nickelodeon's presence, the Nick Hotel off of World Center Drive was actually rebranded into a Holiday Inn. I was never a fan of that hotel, and as popularity for Nickelodeon continued to drop, apparently neither was anyone else. Actually, Kevin from Defunctland did a pretty interesting video on the Nick Hotel and its downfall, so I suggest you check it out. So in June of 2016, the Nickelodeon Suites Resort became the Holiday Inn Resort Orlando Suites. Rolls right off the tongue. The time capsule buried back in 1992 from the original studios had actually been moved to the hotel after its closure. So now, when the resort closed, it had been allegedly transported to Nickelodeon's headquarters in California. While now the only way you can see the inside of the former studios is to buy a $200 Blue Man Group VIP ticket, the view on the outside is admittedly very depressing. For me, it's kind of symbolic of a childhood that slowly faded away. I remember watching Legends of the Hidden Temple every morning before school, that being one of the fondest memories I have of early morning children's television. And now the facility of where it was made and subsequently entertained millions of other kids is gone, and this is all that's left. And while Nickelodeon is certainly not the same studio I grew up with, the memories I have from here will always stay with me. And even if it's a depressing, bland building now, for me at least, it will always be cool to keep visiting the former studio to remember the past. Thanks for watching this update of what has happened to Nickelodeon Studios since I made my last video. Matt and I decided to sit down on our podcast and talk about the studios in a little more depth, as well as his personal experience inside exploring the building. That episode of the brand new BSF podcast will be out on its dedicated channel created just for the show. If you're interested in taking a listen, a link will be in the description below. My name is Jake, and thank you very much. For watching.